Carol Baskin. Killed her husband, whacked him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is up guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about my expensive ass sound system that I've got in the wagon. First off though, we're gonna address a couple different things. I personally feel like we need to step up the production quality, just a little bit on the vlogs. Um, a little bit of a higher expectation. Just, just make it a little bit nicer to watch, a little bit cooler. Make it more personal, make it, make it something that we're proud of, something good. So one thing that I feel like is gonna be absolutely perfect for that and awesome is an intro. I feel like the vlog needs an intro. So what have I done this weekend? Spent a lot of time creating an intro for the vlog. I hope you guys dig this because I actually love this. Tell me what you guys think. All right, roll the intro. That was nuts. Woo. Now, you can't tell me that that's not spicy. Uh, I reckon that that's absolutely wicked. Alrighty, so now we're going to jump inside to the wagon and I'm gonna start at the front of the car, so pretty much the, the front stage and move backwards to like the rear stage, I guess you'd say. Another thing that I really wanna start doing as well is I want to, uh, I'm gonna start using the bigger camera for more B-roll. Now I love vlogging with the uh, the iPhone, but I feel like again, we just need a little bit, of, little bit of that step up in the production quality. So I wanna start using a bit more, I wanna use the bigger camera for a bit more B-roll and things like that, uh, but anyway, Let's get into the uh, inside of the car. As you can hear straight away from being from the difference of being outside of the car and now inside the car, the first thing that you really notice is the sound. There is a lot less reverberation, a lot less uh, echoing, things like that. Sounds a lot better. And that's with this door open. So let's get in. Close this door. Now, even more, it is more like a studio. Uh, the VEs were really good for that to begin with. The way that everything's isolated and everything from factory is pretty top notch. But you still need to make it more perfect. In the doors, in the roof, pretty much in every, any surface that can uh, reverberate and bounce sound that's a thin tin metal sheet. Not only have I got Dynamat on all the surfaces, I've also got a, sound, a layer of sound isolation foam from uh, car builders. And that crap is amazing, uh, especially for the speakers that are in the inside the door. So you haven't got sounds just bouncing around, wasting away, losing all of your sound frequencies. It's all actually going to come back into the car for your ears to hear the crispy goodness. Now, yes, you are probably wondering about this massive jacket. It is freezing in Canberra at the moment. And this is a snowboarding jacket. And yes, I'm rocking a snowboarding jacket before it's even technically winter. Normally, the rule of thumb in uh, Canberra is Anzac Day. Anzac Day is when you first turn on your heaters, first get on your jumpers, and everything like that. But at the moment, it is absolutely freezing already, and we're dying. It sucks. We are not climatized to this, so I'm wearing a jumper and a snowboarding jacket. <sighs> I don't know, just, just in case you're wondering. Alrighty, so let's get into the front stage, where, where the magic happens, where most of the sound comes from. Okay, so up front... I have some custom handmade carbon fiber pillars that I made myself. This is the first time that I ever tried to use carbon fiber. And uh, I don't know why, because it was the first time I also made uh, A-pillar pods for like speakers or anything like that. And uh, yeah, you can, you can see they're not perfect, but I'm still proud of them. They still came out pretty cool and they still work. I have thought about taking them out, giving them a sand down to get all these little pitted areas out and uh, get them... Just like, I don't know, get them a bit more flat and perfect, but at the same time, I'm lazy. I may as well just completely remake them. So what I've got up here is I run uh, the Focal Flax Series three-way speakers. What I mean by three-way speakers is there is literally three parts to them. So you have the tweeter, you have the mid-range, and then you have like, what you'd call pretty much the subwoofer, which is in the door. So you've got your tweeter, and then you've got your mid-range. So, and just like how they sound, this is going to pick up your massively high frequencies, this is going to pick up your mid-range frequencies. So all of these combined together make a perfect note, and it, it all harmonizes, especially when tuning it all together. And then as well, what you can't see is in the door, is kind of looking a little bit offset, but you can see inside that I've got the, uh, the door speaker just in there as well. Um, and I've got a bunch of sound deadening around it to create a, like a little cavity so that it fires the sound into the car more, and uh, it works quite well. So from there, I then also have the exact same ones. Now, there's a little bit of wrap still hanging in here that's like trapped in the door, but I can't bother to get it. I do have the exact same ones just here. Now, the way that I personally made these when I was doing it was I aimed them so that they're both pointing at the driver. Yep, there's me, like kind of squish up. But yeah, so they're both pointing at me. Because of course you want, if you're going to spend all this money on a sound system, you want everyone to experience it. You're going to be able to have everyone hear it for what it is so that it sounds awesome. 
But at the end of the day, you're spending all that money because you like to listen to music. So you want it to sound good to you, mainly you. And when you're getting to this kind of level of uh, how fine, tune, like the fi level of fine tuning that you're doing, um, it's going to be so precise and so accurate that you, you it's, it, it needs to be facing you. It needs to be sounding perfect kind of thing. So the way that I've done it is I've actually measured it to the uh, driver's side headrest. So all of them pretty much pinpoint to that direction, which uh, I'd have to be sitting back here for my head to be on the headrest. I sit about here, but it still works the exact, doesn't work the exact same, but you know what I mean. All right, so that that pretty much covers the uh, the front stage for the, the mids and highs. Now, I guess we'll go to what I run for the head unit. So for the head unit, I run an Alpine ILX uh, 007E, I'm pretty sure it's called. It is one of the only head units that I actually like as a double din because it is all flat. You can almost mistake it for, I don't know, like a stock looking unit. It hasn't got all these ugly, like intrusive buttons. Most of these are like touchscreen ones in the actual unit. Um, the fascia that I run is uh, I, literally an eBay special. At the time that I bought this, the only other option for a VE was the Alpine kit. And that alone, before you even decided what uh, head unit you wanted, that was $2,000 just for the fascia. And it had a little, little touchscreen down here. And at the end of the day, these still, these still work. It's still all the buttons that I need. Sure, it's probably not the most prettiest kind of thing, but uh, it works for me. And then just down here, we have a little controller. So pretty much I could, I've, I've programmed this in the system to work with the, the amp for bass. And uh, you can pretty much flick it. When I used to like compete with the system and take it to events, uh, the way I enjoy my sound, I, it's actually uh, a little bit, it has a bit too much bass for what uh, a judge would like in a sound quality competition. So this little button at the bottom, I could just hit that and it would change the tune to keep the bass a lot more responsive and a, a lot more subtle, which is what judges liked. But pretty much that stays down there and never gets touched. Alrighty, so now we'll move to the passenger seat. Why do you ask the passenger seat? Because underneath the passenger seat is where I have my sound processor and well, digital sound processor. So I run the Helix P6 uh, digital sound processor, which is also an amplifier across six different channels of output. So you can have six different speakers, whether it's the subwoofers in the back or whether it's the, uh, the speakers up front here. You can have six different channels that you can control one by one on the system, which uh, I, I will show you how I tune that pretty much. So I'll show you kind of what that looks like. Oh, I was wondering where those picnic stickers went. All right, so under the seat here, I've got my, uh, that's my sound processor. This is the probably the only thing that I didn't wire it myself because I don't know if you can see all those wires, but hell to the freaking no, I paid someone else to deal with that mess. Um, and a random chip. I really eat in this car. I wonder who the hell left that in here. Anyways, yeah, so that's the sound processor. It uh, looks kind of cool, but it lives under the seat. You don't really see much to do anything with it. So that controls all of the tunability. That controls absolutely everything. Um, and I will show you in the uh, the application on the, on the laptop. Tunability it's got, which is pretty mind-blowing, and some of the cool other features that you can do with it. All right, so now I'll move to the rear stage. So in the rear stage, yet again, we have the exact same, I'll move this wrap, don't need that in here at the moment. You know, it can just look there. So yeah, in the rear stage here, I have the same diamond stitched, uh, like floor mat, I guess you'd say. Um, and it was designed to completely lay flat in the back, but I was uh, really smart with the way I measured it up. And behind here, I do have two sealed enclosures. These are for two 12 inch subs. Their response is best with a sealed box. A lot of people think that you just kind of put it in a wooden box and, and go to town, but each each sub has its own, uh, it needs its necessary airspace for it to, to work at its most efficient, I don't know, efficient response kind of thing. So I've got two of the Diamond uh, Audio Hex subs. These are some pretty expensive, pretty awesome bits of kit. kit. Very, uh, I'm, I always used to run a much bigger sub, huge subs, 15, and 15 inch and 18 inch. You can see the other videos on my channel of the other subs that I used to run. And they used to just absolutely destroy bass kind of thing. Um, whereas these are a very tight-knit, very, very fast-responding sub. Um, and it's really good for uh, really good for reproducing sound. And then I've partnered it up with the, ex with the exact same matching uh, Diamond Audio amplifier. I'm pretty sure it's of the Hex series as well. Um, I wrapped this in the same wrap that's on the roof of the wagon. Um, so it does fit on there, like press fit in there very tight. So I can't really get that off. 
Uh, but then I just tuck the wires neatly up underneath, have the wires going to there. I'm pretty sure I, oh, it's been a while, but I can't remember if I wired that in parallel or series. But either way, that's the rear stage and it sounds great and is very responsive. So now we'll get onto pretty much how I tune it and uh, some of the key things about why you would spend so much money on a sound system and the benefits you get from spending so much. All right, so this dusty old relic just here, I've had this computer since I was in high school. But the annoying thing is, is the uh, tuning software that I have only runs on, uh, on Windows. So I need to use this old bad boy. Did I turn that on? I did. So uh, I'll get back to you in 10 minutes once this annoying thing turns on so I can show you what we do. Now for the purpose of the video, I won't actually connect it to uh, mess around with the tune itself. So we'll go into start demo mode. Alrighty, so here's the tune that I have in the wagon. So I know that a lot of this is going to be very confusing to you and you're not going to have any idea what any of it does. To be perfectly honest, I don't even know what half of this shit does. But you have all of your channel frequencies pretty much along here. Um, so this is how you can, you can physically turn off every speaker one by one. So you can actually tune it, listening to it one by one kind of thing. All right, so I've got them marked out here. So what we're looking at right now is the front left high. So that would be the tweeter just there. And it is measured from, so from 2000 Hertz upwards to 20,000 Hertz. I've got a slight slope just to uh, bring the frequencies in to make it nice kind of thing. All right, so this is bringing up every path of everything that we have tuned. So we've got going from the left to the right, you have your low frequency, which is the subs. You have your mid, you have your, your subwoofers in the doors. You have your mid range. And you have your tweeters. Now, pretty much what you do is, or at least what I do and what I was taught is, of course, you could pay someone to tune it. You can pay a professional to tune it. You can, they, they actually know what they're doing kind of thing. But the way I was explained it and the way I've done it and had a lot of fun with it is you just do it yourself. Um, you, you pretty much, as long as you stay within the realms of the frequencies, especially with the smaller speakers, if you stay in the higher frequencies and don't give them low notes, you can't really hurt it if you're going to play safe. But it doesn't matter who you pay, what professional you get done, doesn't matter what the graphs look like, uh, at a competition kind of thing. Everyone hears everything different. I don't know what it sounds like to you compared to me. My sound system may not sound the best to your ears, but to me, it sounds great. So pretty much I just shut off speaker one by one. And I literally just listen to it and tune it so that it sounds good. Um, I haven't started the wagon in a while, so I don't know how good the battery is going to be. But I'll uh, try and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, the battery is completely dead. I can't even turn anything on. Um, I can't, don't really have anything to jump it right now. But pretty much the difference between it all is, is the frequency range. You have your, your slope and everything, your char characteristics. I pretty much just play with everything, especially with like all your sliders here and everything. See how that's actually changing the frequency? Like that's that's the slope and the roll off. Like especially around your highs, that's how you control like the the S's and the the everything that's going to like pierce your ears and sound horrible. This is how you control it. Um, and you've got all of these bands across here. So if I want to raise raise the bass in it, I can bring it up or bring it down if it sounds too tinny or something like that. And I literally go through speaker by speaker because you can li literally shut them off one by one at a time to listen to them each singly. singularly. Um, that is how I go around and get the exact sound that I want. Um, and then one of the coolest things, this is why you spend a lot of money when you're coming to uh, sound processes and things like that, is you have uh, phase, polarity, and time up here. Now, the biggest one is time. So the polarity, that's which way, we don't need to get into that. But here is where you have the distance of the speaker. So literally what I've done from every single speaker, one by one in their own channel, I've gotten a tape measure, measured from where the speaker mounts to the headrest of the seat. So it knows exactly, so that the sound processor under the seat knows exactly how far away every single speaker is from my ears. And then from there, it can then do the calculations on how much time delay it needs to go, like give to every speaker to delay the sound coming out of it so that all of the sounds hit my ear at the exact same time. Now that is some mind blowing crap right there. When I first found out that you could do that kind of stuff, like 
it blew my mind. Because, you know, especially when you've got some new speakers, you're sitting here dead straight on, and, like, you can hear more sound coming from here. You have, like, a bit of bass coming from the back, and, it, like, sometimes the bass will, like, behind. It'll, like, be a bit punchy or just, like, it, it doesn't sound like it's, it's, like, quick and snappy and with the beat of the music. So what that does is, especially with the subs, is it then delays the rest of the stage so the bass is hitting only a couple milliseconds faster than all the rest of the sound, but so that all of it hits at a smooth relative time so that you're all getting it at the same time in your ear, so you're actually getting it the way that it should sound. Now, I really do wish in a video I could show you how it sounds kind of thing, but there's no point in doing that. It's like recording a TV to show you how how high quality a TV is. It just it doesn't work like that. The microphones can't pick up the quality from the speakers, can't pick up the channels, it can't, it can't pick up the time delay, it can't it can't do anything like that. So even though I re would really want to show you how it sounds on camera, it's not that simple. But if I ever run into you guys at a show or anything and you do actually care about the sound and you do want to hear it, I'm more than happy to show you it if you come up and ask. Alrighty, so that, this was pretty much just a quick video because I really want to explain this. I've had a lot of people that have, have asked about the sound system and uh, just the small things like that. Um, so yeah, other than literally um, wiring up the, uh, the sound processor, I have done all of this myself. I used to be highly addicted to car audio. The most viewed video on my channel is a, is a car audio build video. I do have quite a few of them on my channel kind of thing. So if you do, if you want to see those, if you want to see the kind of stuff that I used to do, some of the crazy sub builds that I used to do, they're like, they were huge. They were massive. At the time, some of the biggest in Australia. I, I'm not that massively into bass anymore. Uh, that was something that I was hugely into when I was younger. Um, I used to have two of the only subs that were in the country. They were two 15s that weighed 60 kilos each. It was insane. That's what I used to have in my old VR wagon. I do have videos of all of that on the channel. So if you are interested in that, have a, have a little dig through. Go to the popular video section on the channel and you'll, you'll see the build video. Um, but yeah, this is more of a sound quality build of everything that sounds great in the car, of it, of it all composed, because I, I really like listening to music and I like hearing it sound good. But I guess who doesn't really? Uh, it just depends on the level of how much money you want to throw at it. I could throw a shit ton more. Focal, the, the brand of speakers that I have up front, they uh, have a set of speakers that cost $20,000. Um, I haven't heard them or seen them in real life. I know that there is a car in Australia that does run them, or did run them at least. Um, but yeah, that's this is pretty much just an interior rundown of how the sound system works in the wagon. Um, I will go into more in-depth videos later down the road, pretty much, if you want, breaking down more of the stuff in or on or around the wagon and pretty much in the build, I guess you'd say. But at least for this video, this is going to be it. Uh, if you do want more car, car audio stuff, I'm happy to do more car audio stuff. But yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Uh, I really hope you guys like the intro. Um, I, I quite like it. I think it sets a good tone and a good pace for all the videos and kind of the vibe that I want to have for all this stuff. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. Um, we are very slowly, uh, we are slowly but surely climbing. And uh, the, the more subscribers, the more viewers, the more likes, the more comments we get, the more cool crap we get to do. And I have a lot of cool stuff planned and a lot of cool stuff that's coming. Uh, but at least for now, this is going to be it for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one at Wednesday at 6 p.m. Alrighty, guys. Peace. You bitching and bugging, there's nothing that we got in common. I've been out grinding and hustling, investing this paper, got tired of eating that ramen. All of my music be heat, I ain't missing a beat. I've been blessed with impeccable timing. Watch all them people who friendly, it turn into envy whenever they see that you shining. Okay, I'm